What happened, drivers? Yeah, 
But how come working class continue to work? Yeah, yeah, nature. Yeah? They got blame, this is Marxist blame. Same thing. Now, there are two classes in the world. One class, capitalist class. These are capitalist countries. These are countries which are strong economically. They are the key driver in global capitalism. These are the home base of the TNCs, MNCs. We call them the core countries. Yeah. The core has to create the periphery or subordinate class. Yeah? Otherwise, they don't have enough, enough what? Enough raw material, enough labor. So they have to create the periphery. How can they do that? Colonialism. Yeah? Colonialism is when countries which are now, which are poor today, was made poor, were made poor. These countries were made poor by colonialism. Yeah? Last time, some of these countries were rich before. Many countries in Latin America were rich before. Yeah? What happened during colonial time? Colonialism is really not really political, you know. It's really, if you, especially if you take Marxism, it's economic. Yeah? It is about extracting surplus in the economy. Yeah? So, can we discuss all the core countries, like UK? Uh, what else? UK, France. What else, colonial master? Mm -hmm. Netherlands. The Dutch, also, you know, colonial master. What else? We have UK, yeah? UK colonized a lot of countries, French colonized uh, like uh, Vietnam. And depending on which country colonized you, you know, UK not bad, you know. The countries that UK colonized actually developed quite well. The French didn't leave anything much from Vietnam, actually, only extract. Yeah. The uh, Dutch that colonized uh, Indonesia, yeah, not as good as the British. What else? Belgium, South Africa, are colonized by oh the Dutch, yeah, the Dutch is also colonized in South Africa. See, this is why you see South Africa also not very really developed. When these colonial masters colonize, they really go go about exploiting them. Really, it's about going there extract surplus. You know, like for example, go in there and just take all the valuables, just like the British go went into India and took gold coins, huge amount of gold coins, and exploit to Great Britain. Yeah. How else? The colonial master extracts surplus. Another thing they do is to change these countries into one crop economy. Only do one thing. In the end. Cotton. No cotton very well. Now cotton for export. Yeah? Um, South Africa, coffee bean. Malaysia, rubber. Yeah? These countries were once diversified in cotton. Or oh, Thailand. Thailand the what? Rice. Export rice. All these were done during colonial time. And once countries are converted into one crop economy, it's very hard to diversify the game. You know, these countries become dependent. These countries produce this for export, not for internal consumption anymore. Yeah? So, they extract surplus in terms of these, you know, agricultural products. But why is colonial people? Continue to do it. They have to create alienation, and that came in form of colonial mentality. Have you heard about colonial mentality? Well, you guys probably not, because now you guys have break away from that idea. But my parents' generation, anything Western is better. They are better. They are better species. They are better kind of people. You know the. The non white serve, the white is normal. Yeah? That's the idea. 
you see that the wife is born to rule, and the non-wives are born to serve, you know? That is colonial mentality. But now, as you can see, as you know, now you see the wife and her to serve, especially those wife from Russia, yeah? Wait in many restaurants, for example. So, the current to was time which take Marxist perspective, you know? But instead of just looking at one country, you look at the world system. And instead of the world system, that is the dominant class, the dominant class. Classic, dominant class, exploit, subordinate class. They are much better in service. Right? So, the relationship among countries is the relationship between the core periphery. He also acknowledged middle class, the semi periphery. Yeah? These are the countries which is not really called, because they are not really the key to global capitalism. They are not really poor or just like just like an uh, agricultural country waiting to be exploited. We have semi periphery. So you have connections among these. Less inequality exploitation, we mentioned that. To Sun. This is one of the earliest attempts to explain globalization. Two critiques. This theory is not global, since it doesn't address the transnational process. Yeah? To Sun, this is globalization because this world system. This work is called the world system. But to his critique, including Mrs. Bosley, she says, this is not global sociology. This is not theory of globalization. Anyway, I somehow don't think that you use Wallerstein, yeah, because we already have so many economic globalization, which is new work, like Square coming next week. Okay, Singapore. Where is Singapore's position in the world system according to Wallerstein's scheme? Say my story, yeah, Where? What about China? Core. Core. Yes. Some people say China is really near there. Really. Whether you can be concluded there, whether China is the key driver in the global economy or not, in case I think they are actually are very influential. Yes, so if something happens to China, probably it will have that impact on other countries. Okay, another guy. Just now, they introduced you to was time in terms of economic globalization. Now, this guy is political. Yeah, I can bring. Political, you should not so you. Again, this guy also a political, so a political scientist, not sociologist. This guy teaching at Princeton. You know Princeton? In the US. Okay, what did this guy say? Somehow we become politics, yeah? And being written by politician or not really politician, political scientist, yeah? It's not that sociological and not very interesting. <laughs> this idea. But anyway, it's in your subject, guys. This one is talk about USA that helps countries connected through what? Through encouraging economic globalization. Yeah? So it's not about economic per se, you know. It's about politics. It's politics that lead the economy. Yeah? It is a politics. The idea that USA would like to have uh, power all over the globe. Yeah? Yeah? It is about power of the US that control all countries over the globe. In order to do that, in order to advance its global political power, hegemony, authority, yeah, the U.S. then helped to rebuild Japan and the West after World War II. <coughs> Under some big commercial plan or Euro recovery plan so that U.S. can influence these countries. They become U.S. allies. They are under U.S. hegemony. Other things include 
help to create a new help the needs or the next newly industrialized country access to the US market. Help to create IMF and World Bank. Yeah, World Bank last time was called International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. It was created after World War II in order to give loans to countries being affected by war, you know, in times of nation building. So how to boost that economy? Because, you know, the U.S. was very afraid. If these countries did not do well, they would join the U.S.S.R. communist camp. Yeah? In order to contain the U.S.S.R. Yeah? Communist Russia. If the U.S. create a lot of things to help these countries. Yeah? To improve that, you know, um, their economy up, after being ravaged by war. Yeah? In doing that, U.S. enhanced that global 